What's up, cop gang? Welcome back to the statics. So, our goal is to use the method of sections to find the forces in force BC, FC, and FE. So, let's get started. So, we're using the moment of, or the method of sections, and that means that we're going to need to basically make a cut. But before we make a cut, we need to finish this force body diagram and then make sure that we know all of our unknowns. So, let's do that. So, in our force body diagram, I haven't finished it yet, but this is kind of what you get. Uh, point A is a pin, and point D is kind of a roller. So, that means that if you have a pin, that there's going to be force, oh, this is dead. So we're going to have A of Y and A of X, right? A of X. So a, a roller has two unknowns, whereas this is a, or this is a pin. A roller has only one unknown. So this is going to be D of Y, right? Because it only pushes up. It doesn't restrict movement in the X, Y, whereas the pin A does. So we need to find D, A, Y, A, X, and D, Y. So to do that, uh, let's start with the easiest one. A of X is going to be the easiest one. So we can start with the sum of the forces in the X direction. We know it's equal to zero because this is at equilibrium. And just looking at all the external forces, the only thing we have is A of X, so minus A of X. And that just tells us that A of X is equal to zero. So easiest part of the question right there. So now, if we were to take some of the forces in the Y, we're going to have two unknowns, right? We're going to have D of Y and A of Y. And we don't know both of those. So we're going to have to basically do a moment to find one of them. So if you take the moment around a certain point, then it's going to get rid of one of them, and all we have to do is find the next one. So let's take our moment around A. So let's take the sum of the moments around A. We know it's equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. So each one of these is three meters long. So let's start with the six kilonewton one. It's pushing down. That's going to make us want to rotate clockwise around A. And if we're rotating clockwise, we have to subtract it. So we're going to subtract the force minus six then multiply it by its distance in the x direction, which is three meters. So then our next one is six kilonewtons. It's pushing down in the y direction. Again, that's making us want to rotate clockwise. So we're going to subtract the six, and then we're going to have to multiply it by its distance in the x direction, which is three meters plus another three meters. That's going to be six. So then our final force is d of y. So d of y is pushing up. So it's going to make us want to rotate or counterclockwise. So if we're going counterclockwise, we're going to add d of y. So plus d of y, and its distance in the x direction is 3 plus 3 plus 3, so 9. All right, so then really easily we're just going to add these together and move them to the other side, divide by 9. You're going to find that d of y is equal to 6 kilonewtons. So then all we have to do to find a of y, some of the forces in the y direction, is equal to 0. It's equal to a of y, right? We're going to go from left to right, so a of y pushes y minus that 6 kilonewton at the top minus the next 6 kilonewton, and then plus d of y. So d of y we just found to be 6, right? So minus 6 plus 6, move one of these over, you're going to find that a of y is also equal to 6 kilonewtons. So there we go. So we got the easy part out of the way, now we need to do the, the, moment, or the method of sections. So when we're doing the method of sections, we want to take a cut, and the cut needs to be really effective. So for a cut to be effective, you want it to go through all of the forces you're trying to find. So we're trying to find force BC, force FC, and force FE. So that's going to be this line here, BC, FC, and FE. So an effective cut would look something like this, right? If you go right there, you're going to cut off all three of them. And that's what we're trying to do. So we're going to take the cut right there, and we're going to redraw a force body diagram. So we're going to start at A now. So we have A. So it goes over to F, up to B, like that. But then now, Instead of having this full line, it's going to turn into a force, right? Because we're taking a cut here, so we're going to have left a force. So let me draw these in blue. So this is going to become BC. This is force BC. Then the force FC is going to come this way. This is force FC. And then force FE is pushing down this way. So force FE. So I assume that they were all in tension. The reason I did that is it's going to make things a lot simpler when we do our math. And it's going to be easy to find out later if they're in tension or compression this way. So there's no assumptions that you have to make. You can just draw it and figure it out later. So this is 3 meters long. This is 3 meters long. And then we know that this angle is going to be 45 degrees. And that this angle is going to be 45 degrees. So now we have this. And we basically, oh, I forgot my A of Y. All right, so A of Y goes here. And this is 6 kilonewtons. And then we also forgot that we have this 6 kilonewton load up here. That's 6 kilonewtons as well. Okay, so now we really have this force body diagram done, and we just can go ahead and do this like we would any other problem. 
So what's going to be the easiest one to solve right away? It looks like we're going to have to take moments, right? Because if we use some of the forces in the x, we have three unknowns. Some of the forces y, we have two unknowns. So the best way we can do it is take a moment. And if we take a moment around f, right? This is point f right here. If we take a moment around f, these two forces are gone. And then all we have left is this one force that's unknown. So let's start with that. So some of the forces around f, or some of the moments, excuse me. I don't know how to do that. Some of the moments around f is equal to zero. And let's do it. So the first one, a of y, is pushing up. So around f, it's going to make us want to rotate clockwise. So we're going to have to subtract that. So it's going to be minus 6 and times its distance in the x, which is 3. OK, so now that the next force we have is force bc. So it's pushing at this 45 degree angle. But like we said earlier, whatever acts in the y direction does not cause a moment. We just want to, cons we're just concerned with what causes in the x direction, All right? So force BC is pushing in the x direction this way, which is gonna make us want to rotate clockwise. So again, that's gonna be subtracting. So we're gonna subtract force BC, but we just want what's in the x direction. So to take what's in the x direction, we're gonna have to take sine or cosine of 45. 45 doesn't make a difference if it's sine or cosine. So let's just choose sine of 45. So force BC times sine of 45, is it's force in the x direction. So then we're gonna have to multiply it by its distance in the y direction, which is that three right there. So these threes are gonna cancel out, and we can move one of these over, and you're gonna get that force BC is equal to negative six over sine of 45. Right, so then you do the math on this, you get force BC is equal to negative 8.49 kilonewtons. And because it's a negative number, it's gonna mean that we're in compression. So a positive number tells us that we're in tension because we assumed that they're all in tension. But if you get a negative number, that means we're in compression. So we're gonna label that compression. So that's the answer to that part. So then we just have to do the next parts. So let's do the next ones. So I think the next easiest way we could solve this would be some of the forces in the y direction. Because we have these two unknowns that act in the x direction, but only one of the unknowns acts in the y. So there's just gonna be one unknown. So if we take some of the forces in the y, we know it's equal to zero. So we start with this a of y, so it's positive six. And then we have this negative six pushing back down, so those two are gonna cancel each other out. Then we have force bc pushes down, so negative force bc. Again, we're gonna have to take that only in the y direction, so that's gonna be cosine of 45. And then we also have force fe here, which pushes down, so negative force fe. And then that also is cosine of 45. All right, so this six minus six is equal to zero. This cosine and cosine cancel out. So we're gonna move one of them over and you're gonna get force Fe is equal to negative force BC. So we know force BC is negative that, so it's gonna be force Fe, it's equal to negative, negative 8.49. So you're just gonna get that Fe, force Fe is equal to 8.49 kilonewtons why did I put five? I don't know. 8.49 kilonewtons, but it's going to be a positive number, which means that we're in tension. Right, so perfect. Now we just have one force left. It's going to be the easiest one. So let's go ahead. So some of the forces in the x direction is going to be the easiest. We could also take a moment, but I think it's going to be easiest if we take some of the forces in the x direction. So what do we got, right? We have force BC acting in the positive x direction, but at an angle, so we have to take sine of 45. We got force Fc, which just acts perfectly in the x direction. And then we also have plus force Fe. And then this acts at cosine of 45. Right. So let's, uh, let's move force Fc over. So you're going to get negative force Fc is equal to, so force Bc, negative 8.45 sine of 45. I don't know why I keep putting five, it's a nine. And then this is positive, so it's gonna be plus 8.49 cosine of 45. And like I said, sine and cosine of 45 are equal to each other. So what happens is that force Fc is equal to zero kilonewtons. And there you go, so that means that's a zero force member. So we could have figured that out visually, but here we go, we represented it mathematically too. So there you go, so that's how you solve this problem. Uh, feel free to check out my channel if you have any more questions like this. I have a whole playlist on statics, and ask any questions in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.